Queensland Senator Susan McDonnell was the second Australian politician to test positive for COVID-19. She's now made a full recovery coming out of quarantine. She's now back on deck working to fix rural issues in North Queensland amid this pandemic that is crippling the local economy and, of course, tourism in that area. She joins me now for her first in-studio interview since coming down with the virus. Susan, welcome to the show. How are you? Well, I'm very well. Thank you for asking, Peter. So tell, take us through the symptoms. I mean, what, what actually... Did, did you get it bad or... Ha, I mean, what actually happened? Well, I think I had a pretty light touch. So on Friday morning, I woke up with a dry throat and, uh, and that afternoon I started... I knew I was coming down with a fever and uh, Peter Dutton had been diagnosed that day, so it was kind of top of mind. And so I went out to, uh, to be tested, went home and self-isolated. I missed the Cowboys-Broncos game in the new stadium, which was uh, a real disappointment. I had to watch it on TV and uh, waited until Monday afternoon when the tests came back and they said I had uh, coronavirus. Yeah. And how did you treat it? I mean, other than self-isolation, I mean, what do you do? Just, just try and take it easy, I guess. Yeah, well, as I said, I had it pretty lightly. So uh, I had, you know, uh, aches and pains. I, I spent most of the weekend sleeping. But by Monday, I didn't feel too bad at all. So a couple of Panadol. And when I got the diagnosis, the protocol at that time was to go into the Townsville Hospital, to go into the isolation ward to be monitored. And uh, after about uh, 24 hours, the doctor said, well, why don't you go home and, and uh, get better there because there's nothing we need to do for you here. And they were able to close the isolation ward then because, you know, very happily, uh, we have had a very steady number of patients, uh, of people p test positive in Townsville. And most of them have been from coming back from overseas, uh, except for me, I believe. Now, there was a new case, I think, uh, earlier today. How is North Queensland sort of ha psychologically, I guess, uh, bracing itself for this, uh, for this coronavirus? Because, um, you know, some of the regions aren't too badly affected, but, of course, we all know that this is a highly infectious uh, virus. Yeah. So, uh, North West Queensland hasn't had any cases yet. Uh, Townsville and Cairns and uh, uh, Mackay and Rockhampton have all had some. Uh, but look, the communities are behaving incredibly well. Uh, the panic buying has stopped. Uh, people are social distancing, are washing their hands. Uh, I think they're, they're, you know, behaving really well so that if we were to get community infection, I believe we'd be able to manage it. Uh, but people are worried. You know, we've lost uh, 1,500 jobs from the tourism industry uh, in the first couple of weeks, and, uh, and that's really distressing. Uh, three in four people in Townsville have been affected either by losing their jobs or losing ours. Uh, but fortunately, the, the region has a lot of agriculture and mining, which are the essential businesses, essential services. So I think that the region has a good underlying base. But, you know, it is really tough for businesses uh, who are worried about what the next few months holds for them. You mentioned panic buying, Susan. Now, you've been talking to Woolies and Coles about trying to ease yeah. some of the problems with supplies in North Queensland. Well, take us through that. Yeah, so uh, we've got a, a unique situation in, in the north and the west of the state where people live in isolated communities, on cattle stations, uh, fishing boats, all sorts of different places where they need to be able to come in and buy bigger amounts of food because they can live, you know, hundreds of kilometres away from town, uh, sometimes a thousand kilometres. So they need to be able to come in and buy enough food to last them for a period of time. And because of the restrictions that had to be put on food, because of the panic buying, uh, they have not been able to. But I've been working with the big supermarkets and wholesalers, and I have to say they've been really fantastic about getting their supply chains moving more quickly and they understand that this is a real issue for North and, and Western Queensland. And they're putting in place uh, systems to allow people to be able to order online and shop online uh, and either pick up at the store or get these bigger orders delivered. But it's been a real problem for stations where people are driving, you know, hours and days to come to town and then finding out that they can only get two tins of something and a half a packet of something else. Just quickly, Susan, you get around the bush, you get around the regions a lot in your job. 
How do you think uh, voters in the regions of Queensland would react to the fact that uh, 224,000 mostly Brisbane-based public servants will get a pay rise on July 1 when everyone else is basically imploding from a fiscal perspective? I think they are just amazed and horrified and but probably not surprised because this is something that we've seen over and over from this government is willing to pay bonuses to public servants when there are people particularly in the regions doing it really tough whether it be floods or fires um, and now with coronavirus so it just seems extraordinary the federal government moved quickly to make sure that there wouldn't be any pay rises go through and I think it's, it's a bare minimum when there are people who are worried about having food on the table and a roof over their heads. But Which leads me to why the JobKeeper program, um, which the, the details of exactly who will receive payments and uh, how will be ironed out next week in Parliament. But in the meantime, it is providing security to people, uh, security to businesses to stay open and to continue idling along for as long as they possibly can because we want to keep people in jobs, we want to keep businesses running so that when this is over we rebound as quickly as possible. Yeah, and guess who pays for that 2.5% pay rise on July 1? The taxpayer. Susan McDonald, thanks for joining us tonight. Really appreciate your time.